this video, I'm going to be showing you one of my go-to coverage defenses against gun-tight slots or gun-tight or 2x2 two two tight or however you want to word it. This is probably one of my favorite defenses, like I said, for the tight slots or the gun-tight meta that you might be facing. I find that, especially on the PlayStation side of things, that a lot of people are going to this offense where they're basically running gun-tight, throwing rollout corners uh, with escape artists. It's really difficult to defend. So in this video, I thought I would do a breakdown on a nice little balanced, very basic defense that is actually really, really effective against tight or tight slots. If you're new to the channel, I want to ask you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. Um, my channel is focusing on helping people become better Madden players. So if you want to get better at the game, uh, we try to post every single day, multiple videos a day that can help you get better at this game. So if you want to get better, again, hit that subscribe button. It's completely free to do that. And we're in the 46 playbook. I'm going to be showing you a really cool little package out of the Nickel 335 normal. So what you want to do in the packages is you want to go to the safety Nickelback package. What that does is it puts a safety at your Nickelback. You don't need to keep him there by any means. We're actually not going to. We're going to, as you can see, sub him out. Now we have our kind of resubbing in our safeties across this board here. So as you can see that. And then what we're going to do is put safeties in at the uh, linebacker position. So you see here, I'm just kind of going to go through and uh, put some safeties in here that are fast and can react to zones. And then at the bottom, we'll put in, you know, some pass basic. I like to put linebackers in at the end and then put a D in at nose tackle. Now, um, you actually don't have to change any audibles. We're going to be talking about the Tampa 2 um, and how it is really, really good for uh, a lot of what people are doing out of tight or compression. Okay. So uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and just kind of back the ball up and give us a little bit more room. And you're going to see how this coverage defense is going to work. So the way that this coverage defense is going to work is we're basically going to try to do our best to force our opponent to have to check the ball down underneath. And so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to audible over to the Tampa 2. Now, if you take a look at this, you're going to notice that um, one of the major problems with a Tampa 2, for example, might be the play mesh spot, right? Because they could just simply roll out, get a little bit extra time here, uh, and hit this post across the middle of the field. Obviously, Brady, um, obviously we get shedded because it's practice mode. Another thing that you'll see a lot if you're running a lot of cover 2 is you'll get this concept right here that I'm about to show you, which is basically a one play touchdown, so the play flood. They're gonna simply put a corner route over here, block this tight end, streak this guy. And then the running back can be on a number of different check down routes, but typically they're gonna roll out of the pocket and they're just gonna to try to hit this bomb over the top of the cover two defense, okay? So that's, you know, those are the two main things. Of course, crossers and corners are obviously a very popular thing. So the first thing that I like to do against gun tight um, is I love to base a line against this defense because what we want to try to do is give at least the illusion that we're it's essentially defensively we're going to play an outside in approach and what that basically means here is we're going to try to funnel everything back into the middle of the field which is where our user is in this defense okay so i start out with base align when defending this formation we're going to audible down to cover two and the adjustments are fairly simple we're going to put both of our safeties in outside thirds we're going to take our nickel corner and put him into a middle third. Then what I like to do is globally, uh, I like to blitz my user and then put both linebackers in vert hooks. Now, really important, you want to shade your coverage down and then you want to re-cloud the cloud flat coverage on the outside. And then if you want to, you can crash your lineup and three rack so that you can have some nice underneath coverage. So as you can see here, it's a very nice little cover three shell that is really effective. Now, I'm just going to use... Again, a standard concept that you're going to see from this would be something like this play mesh post, and it would look something like this, if you will, okay? So what you'll see here is the vertical hooks will do a really good job on some of the underneath routes, and then you can bail back and it gives you freedom to go cover that. Now, the other thing you'll notice is because you have outside thirds from the safeties, a lot of times those crossers and post routes will get played by the third, and it will be much more difficult. I'll, show, I'll give you another example here, and I'll throw the ball to the post without having any user responsibility. So let's say, again, you know, they're going to go with something probably, um, you know, probably like this out of that mesh, mesh spot play. 
you're just in this Tampa two, outside third, outside third, and then you're going to put both linebackers in the vert hook, shade down, and then put the clouds back out there. And you can do this relatively quickly, especially the more you learn out of three through five wide. It's a really easy defense to adjust out of. It's why a lot of people like the defense. But anyways, if you look here, I'm gonna try to throw this. I'm gonna throw that there. And that outside third, I'm telling you, will break on the ball, especially if you have a good safety there that has high zone. Um, a lot of times you'll see him break on the ball a little bit better than he did in that example. If you wanted these guys, you could always bring these guys down a little bit just to, again, help with the break on the ball. But they're going to break on the ball fairly well. Then another little trick you could do if you wanted to um, on more of like the seam streak type stuff, this is a great little trick, is to take that uh, nickel corner and put him in the outside third as opposed to putting the other guy. So I'll show you the same concept, but this time the nickel corner is going to be in the outside third. And this is something I've started doing recently. It's been very effective for me. Uh, but again, you see here these shaded down vert hooks typically do a good job on the slant. Watch this post. You see how that outside corner third say he breaks on the ball just a little bit better um, to keep everything in front of you. So that's another little piece of this. Now, I want to talk briefly with you about another piece of the pie, and that is a vert hook, um, a vert hook that is not shaded down in this defense. So let's say that we don't shade down our vertical hooks. Um, I want to show you a little concept. What we can see out of this, especially out of plays like Flood, but also Mesh Spot, sometimes you will get some matching principles uh, within this coverage. So you'll see, like, take a look at the bird hook on the right. You see he'll kind of climb. There he doesn't match on this play. Um, and then, of course, like I said, you can user that too, and it's going to be a bang, bang throw. You have really good zone out there. That's going to be a difficult throw. Now, let's talk a little bit about the play Flood, where if they're just running a traditional flooding combination, to the left side of the screen. Again, this is going to defend that fairly decently, and I'll show you and explain why um, as we take a look at this. So if we take that safety, or not the safety, but the corner, the slot corner, put him in that outside third, you'll see that this cloud flat, because it's a baseline cloud flat, does a really good job at defending this. So you see we get help out there, and then this corner route really is, again, bang, bang, throw on the sideline, potential knockout if you have a good zone ability on that player. Another thing that we're gonna see within this defense that I really uh, just wanted to hit on really quickly here is its ability, the defensive ability that you have because of the three rack, because you have three uh, zones over the middle of the field, you don't have to be super concerned with the middle of the field. So let's say you get a concept like this, I can bail to this and take a look, that in route's not open. There's nowhere to throw the in route. And the in route is one of the most popular routes from the compression sets because what a lot of people like to do let's say they were going to the play mesh spot you'll see this a lot where we're going to streak mike evans we're going to deep in route johnson this is a great man beater a lot of people like this against man to man so they might do a concept that looks like this you don't have this is this defense that we're showing you is going to do really really good um, against that because what you're going to get is again you get this three red hook on the field you have three people over the middle of the field very good middle of the field coverage. So even the in route's not there, I can bail back to this, and there's really nothing open on this concept. So this is a great way that you can deal with that. Another thing that this allows you um, to deal with fairly decently is whenever you're in a situation, which I don't know what just happened on the rebase line there, um, but whenever you're in a situation where your opponent is wanting to throw the four verticals wheels, so what they'll do is they'll typically call four verticals, double wheel, and then maybe streak the running back or something, maybe angle route him. Um, if you take a look at this coverage here, you're going to notice that this wheel is going to be thrown right there. That's going to be intercepted nine times out of ten. So the shaded down vertical hook again, playing some really, really good concepts. Let me take a look at the instant replay real quick and show you something about this vertical hook. Again, it just puts these guys, especially in a baseline situation, he's in the throwing lane. He's in the throwing lane here. This is a very difficult throw. Um, it's, you know, again, it's not, you might, in Madden 22, it's hard to say you're going to stop everything 100% of the time, but this is going to give you a pretty decent chance. Now, this wheel route on the right side, I will say, is a little bit better, and I'll show that here um, in just a second. So, again, I'm just going to set up the coverage for you. Uh, but this wheel route on the right side here uh, is a little bit more effective. So, again, just set the coverage up. And I'm just going to force feed this tight end wheel out of four verticals. What you'll notice with this tight end wheel is the, the linebacker is so far inside. Now, he does kind of have a chance to jump that if he has a good zone, maybe an acro there. He certainly can do that. 
But one little trick that you can do, um, that you can do with this, is just simply spread your linebackers and spread your defensive line. And what you'll see here is when you put these vertical hooks on the field, now, again, we're trying to, you know, you might even consider shading outside and underneath just to help that zone principally get a little bit more outside on a four verticals concept. Obviously, you have freedom to use for that because you're going to be opening up air anyway. But you see here, it's not, I mean, it's, it's a tight throw. So it's just something that you, you know, again, the tight end to me is one of the biggest challenges in this formation because if they know what they're doing with that tight end route, that four verticals can be very difficult. But again, as you can see here, the coverage is very adaptable. Now, the last thing I wanted to, all right, two other things that I wanted to hit on about this compression set real quick. Um, and that is the first thing we wanna talk about is the corner route from like a drive corner type play. So again, Tampa two, you know, I, you know, you could easily do, you know, two vert hooks, shade down, and then just go back through and put your, Put your zones out there my controller's kind of messing up here but so again something like this here and what you should see with this is again they're going to try to hit this corner and on the back side they could do you know all kinds of things honestly they might do something like this i mean something typically you see something simple you know like this but anyways if you take a look at this corner route to the triangle receiver that's a really hard throw like that's a really hard throw to make consistently um, and then again, you have that cloud flood underneath. Now I wanted to give you some one other suggestion with this defense that I didn't hit on yet, and it's a little bit more of a zone drop uh, approach. Now again, this is a little bit more difficult depending on the formation, depending on the concepts they're running, but you can put your flats to 20 or 25, put your hooks on five, and you can put your curl flats on 10, something like this right here. And then what this allows you to do with your coverage is let's say they're running, um, you know, again, let's say they're running some kind of rollout, rollout corners like Z-Spot here, for example. Um, what what this allows you to do is you still have the, the yellow zones, right? You still have the yellow zones. I don't know why we're doing that, but anyway, you still have the, the yellow zones, right? So now you don't have to shade down, right? You just need the two vertical hooks. Now what this allows is again, we're gonna put that deep third on the field. We have, you know, again, the underneath coverage, very good underneath coverage here. And what you'll notice is that this rollout corner um, is gonna be hard to throw. See how the yellow zone kind of goes out there at the running back and then you have that there for that in particular route. So this kind of, again, it just kind of, um, you know, in my opinion against tight, it gives you an, an ability to be able to get your zones to me, the biggest difficulty in defending tight is that they can kind of suck your zones in. So by putting zone drops on the field and doing something like like this, for example, uh, right here, simple concept. If you watch this corner on the left, the yellow zone will card the running back, and then now you have that zone right there to be able to defend that. So using the yellow zones really is kind of underneath defenders for your little flats and stuff. It works really well specifically against compression sets and i'll show you one other example real quickly here before we take off so if i just i'm just going to call basic cover two and then like i said we're going to run a we're going to run a little drag you know a couple drags underneath a little meshing combination and then maybe do something like this okay and i just want you to watch the yellow zones you're going to see they're going to defend all the way to the sideline and then if you have those flats on 2025 so that's the real beauty of this is because depending on, I think the yellow zone is the most adaptable zone, specifically the vertical hook for defending this. Cause if I run a concept, let's say I run a concept like this, for example, and I'm in the cover two, I want you to look at the left side, watch the yellow zone. You'll see he'll come inside, but watch him work to the flat, work to the flat, work to the flat. And he's gonna rally and tackle that for a, a short game. So this is a great way that again, you can force them to have to check it down and then just rally and make tackles. So I wanna thank you for watching the video. Guys, if you wanna get my full ebook on this defense, I actually have a Patreon membership where I post all of my guides. You get access by joining it and being a member, you get access to over 20 offensive and defensive ebooks, including the 335 defense which to me is the still the best defense in the game um, obviously nickel normal i think is a very close second those are my two top defenses we've got both of those ebooks in the guide or in the patreon for you it's only ten dollars to join it the other cool part is every week you get updates to that i actually put a major update in there today 
showing you a trips tight end defense that I think is really, really effective. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to get the Patreon membership, there's a link in the description below and you can go check that out. Again, it's only $10 a month and it unlocks everything, unlimited access to all of our eBooks, all of our updates. And also it has a private messaging feature built within it in case you have any questions or uh, need some additional help. Thanks for watching. And if you want to get the Patreon membership, head on down to the description of the video and click the link that I put down there for you.